going to reroute the thermo drive. Electronic mail fail. Stored forever in a virtual library. Computers can't swim. They can now. The data termites. The website. It's alive. Movies and mainframes. Hey everyone, and welcome to season two of Movies and Mainframes. Yes, the podcast that is going to explore and discuss the representation of technology in media. I am your host, Andy, and with me today are Crystal Taylor and Kevin Sparenberg. How are y'all doing today? Doing great. Thanks for having us back. I am excited. Season one was a blast. Let's get going. Yes, let's get going. So here we are, premiere episode of season two, uh, racking my brain. What am I going to lead off this season with? What are we going to talk about? And I thought, well, instead of me choosing the movie that we are going to talk about today, we will let the Thwack community decide what movie we are going to talk about. And the way the Thwack community decided was that every year at Thwack.com, the Thwack team puts together a bracket battle challenge just in time for March Madness. And it is not sports teams duking it out. No, it is things pertaining to geek culture. And this year's bracket battle challenge was so, so perfect. It was tech movies. That's right. It's almost like uh, just synergy. Things matching up. <laughs> and so we they uh, had a bracket of 33 tech movies battling it out for cyber supremacy. And in the end, there was a chosen winner by the community, and it was The Matrix. Yes, The Matrix won it all. Uh, if you want to hear a recap and breakdown of the Bracket Battle Challenge, just go back one episode in the feed and me, Crystal, and Kevin talk about the interesting matchups uh, during that bracket battle challenge. But today we are here to talk about The Matrix from 1999, directed by the Wachowskis and starring Mr. Wu himself, Keanu Reeves. We also have Carrie Ann Moss, Lawrence Fishburne, Hugo Weaving, and my man, Joey Pants. Yes, Joey <laughs> Pantoliano is in this movie. I love me some Joey Pants. Uh, let me read a quick synopsis here and we will just jump right into our discussion. It says, Neo, played by Keanu Reeves, believes that Morpheus, played by Lawrence Fishburne, an elusive figure considered to be the most dangerous man alive can answer his questions. What is the Matrix? Neo is contacted by Trinity, played by Carrie Ann Moss, a beautiful stranger who leads him into an underworld where he meets Morpheus. They fight a brutal battle for their lives against a cadre of viciously intelligent secret agents. It is a truth that could cost Neo something more precious than his life. Dun, dun, dun. Yes. So, uh, yes, we're here to talk about The Matrix. Um, I am it's assuming... A brilliant spoiler-free synopsis. Like, yes. that is epic. <laughs> like, I could not have written that had I seen the movie. Because I would just be, like, spoiling <laughs> everything. It's a simulation. Um, damn it. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, spoiler exactly. alert. <laughs> 25 years too late. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you brought it up. This movie came out March 31st, 1999. The day of this recording is April 2nd, 2024. It is literally 25 years old this week. It is crazy that this movie is 25 years old. Yeah. Yeah. I am going to jump out on a huge limb and assume both Crystal and Kevin that you have seen this movie numerous times and that you enjoy this movie. Would I be correct in my assumptions? Yes, absolutely. 100% still enjoy this movie. It still holds up. I maintain. Watch it if you haven't seen it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, I went to check because the brackets technically ended Friday last. So I was, I wanted to see where everything panned out and I saw the matrix one. And so it was in my head, but I'm not paying attention. I'm, and I'm doom scrolling on the TV, trying to find something to watch. And I pop over to one of my streaming services and it says 25th anniversary, the matrix. And I'm like, oh, well now we just have to watch it again. So I just yep. sat down and hit play and got to experience it all over again because it had been not forever, but a number of years since I saw the first one, mm -hmm. looking at it without the baggage that the second, mm -hmm. third, fourth one put on top. But to watch it with, <laughs> it's not going to, fresh eyes is not going to apply. But to look at it as if it was a standalone movie mm -hmm. and realize just how visually stunning 
the the cinematography is, but also it, even if it was you know in in black and white and done with stick figures, the the storytelling angle of it was just so well done. So well done. I went into this movie. I saw this in the theater the first week it came out. I saw it in the beginning of April. And I went into this movie expecting nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, Because between Bill and Ted, Point Break, and uh, Speed, I was like, I'm a Keanu fan. I mm-hmm. like Keanu Reeves. I'm going to give him a pass. But mm-hmm. man, he was dropping some bombs in between those movies. And it was really hard to be like, no, I, I still like Keanu Reeves. <laughs> and I, I went into this movie thinking I was going to watch another chain reaction from 1996. <laughs> yep. I went into that movie thinking like, okay, Keanu Reeves is back. Morgan Freeman, explosions, I'm down. Came out of that movie so disappointed. Mm-hmm. And I remember all the previews for this movie really leaned into that scene where no matter the length of the preview, if it was a 15 second TV clip or a full length trailer, they always leaned into that clip of Morpheus jumping the rooftops and then mm-hmm. Keanu going, Whoa. Yeah. And so I was like, great. Okay. Is that going to be the movie? That's all it's going to be. But I was like, I'll go see it and came out of the theater, just blown away. I was not expecting a really cool, well-told sci-fi story and a uh, groundbreaking visually, uh, you know, uh, the visual effects in this movie were groundbreaking at the time. Uh, it was the first time it had, you know, uh, theatrical release that bullet time was mm-hmm. ever seen. And it, it was impressive. I really enjoyed this movie. Walking out of this movie, I think I walked out quiet. Yes, and, and exactly. I don't, and I don't do that normally. I'm, if anyone has met me, you know, I I have zero problem just spouting off anything. And I walked out of that movie, just literally doing the Keanu whoa. It was beautiful. The mm-hmm. the, the the tech changes, the green screen. Now, obviously, today we we say bad things about green screening. It didn't look bad. It, I mean, even today, it doesn't. You, you can tell it's green screen because of what we know about how movies are. Yeah. It, it doesn't look bad at all. No, it doesn't. It has Still holds a, up. yeah, it has a visualistic style that whenever it happened in 1999 was bit so hard by, I mean, bullet, t- just taking bullet time, not even the green. I, I think this was the first movie that I can remember that really had that sickly green color timing. Mm-hmm. And whenever we saw it in the Matrix, we started seeing in a lot of copycat mm-hmm. movies. And even with just bullet time, that visual uh, effect, that language, I mean, one, we call it bullet time. So, I mean, it's got its own moniker. Just like if I say the vertigo shot, yep. most people know exactly what that shot looks like. Obviously, bullet time didn't stick around as long as that, but it in like 10 years after that movie came out, I mean, dude, it was featured in others, so many other projects and parodies. And I can't count the amount of parodies I've seen of bullet time. I mean, even Shrek had a yeah. bullet time sequence with the uh, princess Fiona. Yep. Yes. And yeah, it's, uh, it created its own visual language and it still holds up still a great movie. I feel like it sparked an advent of, more sci-fi movies again like bringing kind of bringing us back into because it had it was not just sci-fi it was an action film there was like so much going on in it i did not watch it in the theaters i was 12 years old when this movie came out and my parents were not paying for us to go to the movie theater (laughs) um so i definitely waited until it came out uh to to tv so i definitely saw the tv it cut first for many times before I ever saw the full like theatrical (laughs) release but I will say that it it made it made an impact I mean just even just watching like the first like first few scenes again where you know it is very 90s it's very 90s with the Mm -hmm. club and the CRT monitor and like all of the (sighs) All of the amazing, amazing things where you're like, this this apartment exists in the 90s and no longer. Mm-hmm. This does not exist anymore. And I was telling Andy this before we started recording, but I don't know about you guys, but I 100% would not ever have been woken up from the Matrix. <laughs> if we're in the Matrix right now, 
there's no way they would pick me. I'd see somebody typing on my on my screen and go, mm, this computer has a virus. Better better wipe it. <laughs> yeah. Better reformat the hard drive. We've got some problems. I don't think I would be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna follow those instructions from the computer screen. <laughs> Yes. No. <laughs> I don't care how pretty that tattoo was. I am not following a random tattoo to a club after I handed over a floppy disk. Crystal, you touched on it. I want. I. I. Let's talk about it. The whole red pill versus blue pill mm-hmm. pivotal moment in the movie. Morpheus presents Neo with the option of you can take the blue pill and you will wake up in your bed and this will all seem like a weird dream and you'll just go on with your life, or you can have the red pill and you will see the truth of your reality. So which pill are you taking, Crystal? Okay. Since I since I already started this conversation, I just want to point out that I personally pride myself on being honest like 100% of the time. Honesty is the best policy. I am all for the truth. I'm not afraid of the truth. I don't hide it. I don't run from it. I'm not one of those women that runs from my age or anything. Like It's never a factor, right? I mm-hmm. am a big proponent of it. I feel like I need to preface all of this with that. But I would not take either of the pills. I'm not going to take a <laughs> pill random guy just gave me. Are you serious right now? I don't know you. He trusts him implicitly, like, r- like right away. Right away, he starts trusting these people. And I understand the concept is like he's been searching for mm-hmm. years and years for the Matrix. And somebody's finally like, okay, but that seems like too good to be true. I would not trust it. 100% would not trust it. I'd never get woken up from the Matrix. <laughs> what about you, Kevin? In my life, in 1999, where I was... 100% red pill, without a doubt. Where I am now, that I am a happy, mostly well-adjusted adult, then probably, uh, you know what? There are tough days at work. Uh, f- f- pseudo FBI agents might be coming after me, but at least I understand what I'm working with. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it, in those days, red pill all the way. Yeah. No, for me, I am 100% for sure taking the red pill. And then I am 100% for sure going to instantly regret it. You get it, yeah. I am, <laughs> and I'm going to be the worst about it. I'm going to be complaining and whining oh. the whole time. I'm going to be Cypher yeah. in this movie. Joey Pants, I'm going to sell out the human race so I can get back into the Matrix with ignorant bliss and... Uh, ugh. No, uh-huh. I, I know myself. I'd be like, no, I, I want to know the truth. I have to know the truth. And then the minute I know the truth, oh, sh- I want to go. I want to go back. <laughs> open. No, no, no. Andy, 100% agree. If I wake up completely bald <laughs> and <laughs> someone tells me I've never used my eyes before and all of the, you know, yeah. all of the yeah. input output tubes. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm also regretting it. I mean, it's such a weird question to ask. Because it's literally, do you want to reboot your life? Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And what happens to my kid in this scenario? Did you even have a kid? Did I even have a kid? And if I did have a kid, do I ever see them again? Yeah. See, because you, he doesn't forget his memories of the Matrix. So you have to live with the fact that you abandoned this kid, imaginary or not, that you have feelings for. Yeah. See, I just, I, I'm back to, no, nah, I don't, I don't need to know. Uh, I want to point out uh, that. In 1999, when this movie came out, those Nokia slide phones that oh, everybody has, God. dude, I wanted one so so, so bad. sexy. Yeah, yeah, just, and it's a Nokia, it, so it still works today. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, you wouldn't yeah. be able to throw find that thing off the charger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Neo doesn't make the jump, but the phone survives. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but man, those those phones were so cool when it went so bad. I was stuck with my Motorola clamshell, just looking at it like you you know Matrix phone. I, I was wor- I was still working for Office Depot in those days, and I used to program cell phones in the old days where you actually had a VAX terminal to dial up to a mainframe to set up someone's. Th- yes, it's that long ago. And mm-hmm. when those phones showed up in the movie, everybody and their brother came in wanting them. Yeah. And we were like, we're very sorry. That is an exclusive. You have to go to these stores to get it. They are not shipping those out to retail you have to go to like the motorola store that exists some or the nokia store that exists somewhere probably in new york city 
that mm-hmm. you'd have to go there and get it set up there. Wow. Crazy. What an exclusivity deal. In the Matrix, a big part of it is uh, you can have information, skills instantly uploaded into your mind. We yes. see it numerous times. Trinity uses it to learn how to fly a helicopter within a split second. And of course, Keanu knows Kung Fu. So mm-hmm. he learns all of Kung Fu. Uh, I want to ask y'all uh, this tech. Let's posit this technology is real. You uh, you have it in your house. What are some of the first things that you guys are uploading? What are some skill sets, information that you want instant knowledge of? And remember, you have the skills now because it shows in the matrix that you can do these moves. You don't just know them. You can do them. Yeah, the muscle memory is also part of it. So Mm -hmm. I'd go for dancing. I uh, mm. have no rhythm, <laughs> so it'd be nice to have that because I feel like you could translate that rhythm, the natural rhythm you get from being an accomplished dancer into the rest of your life. And maybe I'd stop running into stuff so much and <laughs> falling downstairs and all this other stuff that I do all the time. You know, I can hope. Yeah. So if you're choosing dancing to start with. Yeah. What what? genre are you what's the first one are you picking up Mm. hip-hop are you taking up jazz ballet or some Uh, bossy specials i think she's going ballroom uh, (laughs) you see that would be the real answer i was gonna say i was gonna say that the the funny answer just because it would be really funny is to learn break dancing first um and i just want to like show up to my kids school and be break dancing i think that would be amazing yeah (laughs) absolutely everywhere with a broken down cardboard box Yep. It's like, why do you have that? Let me show you. Show you. Whoosh, windmill, windmill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, as much computer stuff as I do, there are, like, I would love to be able to, like, download, like, lots of computer things. Like, because mm-hmm. work with them every day, know how these things work inside and out, just be able to work with it without that learning curve. I would probably download stuff having to do with video and cinematography. And that's because mm. I'm helping my wife now, now do some stuff with her business and making videos. And there's just, there's just stuff I don't know. And that's not necessarily something you can do really well with trial and error. I mean, you can, but it takes so much longer to do it yeah. via trial and error. And then there's a million pieces of software and there's a million different output formats and what ones it for, and just being able to like access that knowledge instantaneously and be like, Nope, we need to shoot like this, need a camera there, there, do the storyboard, get your mics on, like that kind of thing would be yep. something for me because I have virtually no skill in it, uh, even less than probably crystal breakdancing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah. I think I would, uh, I think if, I think the first thing I would go for would be uh, like musical instruments. I would love to be able to like, cool, I can play a guitar, I can play piano, French horn, who cares? Like, I would love to be able to just like, I can just make music now. Uh, Because working in video production, I love it. But man, it's really hard to do video production by yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, most of the time you at least need one other person to do something. Yeah, But with music, like, I just feel like, Hey, I could make music by myself, especially if I have the knowledge to play all these different instruments. Yeah. So, yeah. Just that and a loop I, a pedal and be done. Exactly. I'd also, uh, I think the second thing I would upload is languages. I would love to just mm, be able to. That's, ooh, yeah. Any language. That would any be and all languages. And like Kung Fu would be like fourth or fifth on my list, but <laughs> definitely. I think I would just randomly like, you know what? I just, I want to know how to do surgery. Let's just do it. <laughs> yeah, I today, don't plan on doing it, but I can do it now. Yay. So uh, you can be one of those internet experts. Exactly. <laughs> Think yeah. that they know everything. The, see, if this technology really did exist, <laughs> we'd have way more of that, except for maybe they'd be sort of knowledgeable. Yeah. Can we forcibly download the scientific method to people so they understand exactly. they have to make the hypothesis first? Yeah, we just... need to push patches out to people <laughs> on a regular basis. Like, no, yeah. no, come on. Like my my cousin ran into this thing, so statistically, it's going to happen to everybody. I was like, 
<laughs> no, your cousin lives in Reykjavik and only speaks Finnish. That's that's <laughs> only a him problem. You know, there's all the uh, moral implications that go with all of that, though, because there's a like in yeah. there's a game that came out, uh, Prey 2019, and they have neuromods and so very similar. If like they have, they take all the skill of like a world renowned musician. And then they turn it into this neuromod and you can install it and you have all of that skill. But in mm. order to know that, you have to forget something else, for instance. Or uh, uh, yeah. or if you're if you decide, no, I don't want that skill anymore. I want to install something else instead. Like there's the chance that you forget everything that happened while you had that skill. So like, what are the ramifications of this download because like we're positing around it as if it's like there's no there's no consequence you can just download it and you have that information in your brain i think about this too anytime i read anything that has immortal creatures in it right like how do you hold the memory of like a thousand years like Mm -hmm. you don't you have to forget things like there's no your brain doesn't have the capacity to deal with it um so like for for something like this where you can just download any skill or whatever like if if i downloaded all of dancing that's ever existed and i could do that which i wouldn't do all of it but like if i could and i did all of it what else, what would i forget like what would i not know or what would i now not be able to do would i not be able to do the job i now have mhm would i exactly. not you know what are the ramifications they that's the and never mind uh pushing out patches to people's brains being like unethical <laughs> on a number of levels but still that kind of ties into something we haven't talked about uh and i don't know if it's even on the radar but uh the show sherlock he talks about his mind palace right mm-hmm. and like how he compartmentalizes information and what's important and literally I, I i think i'm remembering right he doesn't remember his own birthday because based on the work he needs to do it's not important it's unimportant mm-hmm. right and i'm like oh okay and that's that kind of like, hey, how do you, how do you avoid the you know the buffer overflow in your brain? You know, how do you get to a point? And if it's a skill tree, man, I've seen some good skill trees in video games and some bad skill trees in video game. And this one would be the nail biter. It's like, do I want to learn how to shoot this laser blah 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 thing? But I forget how to make my own healing potions. It's like, wait, what? Huh? This but I forget this not how be, to breathe. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And, you know, what about what about uh, cash clearing? You know, you what if you know it for a little while and then your cash clears and you're good? Oh, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Close those tabs. Close your browser. (laughs) Close the browser in your brain. Clear all the clear all the history. But I have have an emotional connection to my 47 open unnamed browser tabs. (laughs) And music (laughs) is playing somewhere and I can't figure it out. I can't find it. Let's talk about, so in The Matrix, Neo yes. learns the truth. He lives in a simulated world known as The, the Matrix. Matrix. And uh, in the real world, ma- uh, machines have taken over. AI, once again, run amok and decides that uh, humans are going to be used as their power source. Now, I want to talk about... Uh, about humans being batteries and why it is so dumb. Um, Didn't Futurama have this entire thing and like riff on it and be like, wouldn't anything else be a better battery? I know. <laughs> I mean, that's that's the thing that, you know, Morpheus goes through the whole speech about, you know, the bioelectricity that we produce and the 25,000 BTUs of, you know, body heat and that. And he says, and the machines with that combined with, a form of fusion, like, okay, just a form of fusion, mm-hmm. uh, produces all the energy that we that they need to enslave us. They uh, he also points out that the uh, humans scorched the sky, so the sun couldn't uh, get to the machines because of solar uh, power. Yeah. Yes, he says that you know, uh, uh, machine. They felt at the time that the machines would need solar energy to, you know, have all their power needs. Which is also really stupid. <laughs> yes, really stupid. Don't we One, need the sun for everything else that keeps us alive? No, because yeah. then we can have whatever it is, weedy amino acid soup, Ugh. whatever mouse calls it. Yeah. But using humans as batteries, there is no reason to use humans as batteries no. except for the plot of this movie. That's it. It's just mm-hmm. plot armor because 
they've they've shown us just in the matrix alone so many other viable options everybody uh the free people of zion go down underneath the ground geothermal. and we yeah why not geothermal why not wind i'm assuming there's still oceans why not use ocean power mm -hmm. and also like grow algae instead of humans like anything and also and i know we're only supposed to be watching the first matrix but in the later matrix movies they show the sun because mm -hmm. yeah uh neo and trinity go up above the cloud cover it's not even that high and they just get up there and hey there's the sun and we've seen these machines build these ginormous mega structures so why aren't they building solar rays and they even have whatever you want to call it hover anti-gravity technology because the mm -hmm. sentinels are just flying around like nothing mm -hmm. they, they don't even have to be mega structures they could be floating platforms up there and it it's it's just dumb um but and i wish i wish the movie it, it was like one of the big things of the movie uh, story-wise i was like mm. okay but i'm gonna forgive it because you know it has awesome wire foo and fun philosophical conversations. But I really wish like all it needed was when Morpheus is explaining to Neo the reality, like Neo should just ask that question. And it could have been anything. It could have been a throwaway line, but at least like it would have had logic for the movie of like, oh, in the sick, twisted irony, keeping us in these, you know, amniotic fluid pods still fits in with their prime directive you know because yeah so if yeah. We're in an keep AI, the yeah yeah if we keep it if we have an ai of obviously we're going to program like don't harm humans you know yeah. it's it, all the robotic laws and um yeah they could have just had some throwaway line like oh isn't it sick and twisted they think this is fits in with their programming of keeping us safe in all these movies with ai it's always comes down to like do you want to be live safe as a slave or uh struggle with free will so yeah uh, it just well, needed one little line a little tweak yeah i mean and also why bother running the matrix at all if they're just mm -hmm. a battery that you're using to power the rest of everything else because you're machines why would you bother creating a world for them to live in mentally they can yeah. just be like in hibernation their whole lives right i think it was because if they are, if you are in pseudo hibernation you don't your body doesn't pre perform as many functions so you don't get as much heat so you can't harvest it for the bts like <laughs> i like i'm willing to give that one a leap but also do you need this many anymore do you yeah. need literally and they never said a number maybe morbius did i can't remember but like billions, billions. yeah of people who are potential revolutionaries against you if, and that's the other, like my dumb self is like, well, what happens if the power goes out or the internet connection goes out to one of these mega towers full of mm -hmm. you know, 10,000 people? Do they disappear? Do they all basically just have a seizure? Like what happens in the matrix? Well, and also, uh, like, oh, like yeah. additionally, additionally, there's not a real explanation for how they woke up in the first place, right? There was just a person was born into the Matrix that somehow knew he was in the Matrix, and he eventually got out and started pulling other people out. What? Yeah. Where's like, the story of the that, first? Was that a glitch? Was that, like, a bug in the code? Was it, or, was like, it bad programming to start? Was it, yeah, totally. yeah, like... And then how come other people haven't been born with that same thing? Like, what do you mean? And then the whole, that's the whole explanation for why Neo is so special, right? Is he supposed to be like the reincarnation of this original dude? Mm -hmm. So we, it, what? Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. They didn't explain the red pill tracer program really well. It's like, no, it attaches to you so that we can find you, but you didn't find me the, the machine found me and unplugged me and flushed me. So you didn't yeah. find me in the stack. You found me in the waste pool at right. the bottom. What happens if this particular red pill didn't work? You forgot to include enough niacin or whatever. And then all of a sudden I don't get flushed. Then you're just hanging out at the bottom in the well, waiting and waiting. <laughs> yeah. And then that's another question, right? Cause if the, the drone that comes in, like takes the, uh, unhooks them basically, is that 
is that just like a worker drone like bees so it doesn't have any actual like sentience it's just it's got its job and it's doing its job because i mean the argument of course is that these ai have sentience of some form if they're mm -hmm. able to make these decisions um but it, that that one because it just unplugs them and then goes away like eh, whatever yeah. this happens all the time they just wake up and yeah. we just send them to the trash <laughs> like what is is that, that the, if, is that that day's equivalent of like an automated plow all it's literally there to do is man the fields and mm -hmm. that's yeah. it. it cuts out the yeah. weeds which and just lets everything out which is fine the horrifying but, nature of the baby farm yeah well yeah the visual on that is is again to the visual is brilliant in the way it's represented and horrifying with the yeah. tubes and everything when it happens because you're mm -hmm. like okay i get it but also ooh, yeah <laughs> super gross Oh, yeah. I do want to talk about like speaking to technologies, right? All of his mus muscles have atrophied, which d he should have drowned. Um, yes, never mind that. Um, but he, uh, he, all of his muscles are atrophied, so they have like it's like a combination of acupuncture and I guess electric shocks to reinvigorate his muscles. I still think that's really cool, and I don't even I know it. if it would work in real life. Yeah, I, I, I want it now. I want to exercise without actually having to get up. Yes. <laughs> I have another question. Yeah. Please. What are the machines doing with that energy? Like they're running, but like the cities and stuff What's that were built goal? for humans are all destroyed. Yeah. And so like they're just running around. So it's just a perpetual like motion. We're just moving. We're just doing the same thing, farming the humans. Like, And in that case, later on, whenever they like attack them and stuff, they find them and they seek them out and they attack them. Like, but, but, but why? Why even bother? Why uh, waste the your squiddies? energy? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just why do those, why do those yourself? exist? No clue. It's, it's really weird because like you said, what, why do they need all this energy? What are they using it for? Are they, are, are they, are they trying to get to a point where it's like, oh, we are going to build a Dyson sphere around the sun, but yeah. first we need all this, you know, whatever there, there's, there's nothing for yeah. that, but it's, it does seem weird. It's just. Machines making machines, making machines, making machines, like just on yeah. and on yeah. and on. Aren't and on. aren't the computers good at math? Don't they? Can't the computers realize how much is too many extra machines? Although going back to this like early days thing, I would love to see Agent Smith V 1.0 <laughs> because obviously they have had upgrades over yeah. the right. millennia. We'll say millennia. I think Morpheus indicated it was like two hundred years. Two hundred years, yeah. yeah. Um, but the computers if they are completely on their own can upgrade near constantly. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> like the agents looked great and they could slide into basically take people, punt them to somewhere else in the matrix and basically slip into their skin. Cool. Absolutely awesome visuals mm -hmm. and a, a cool concept. Uh, but I noticed two things about it. Number one, how, how badly did that go for the first versions? And yeah. number two, after that individual was killed, the human being inhabited by an agent, it reverts back to the human. So they literally just circumvent the brain activity. So why not just do that for everybody who is plugged in? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, Good point. So, and why aren't there more agents? How expensive are agents? Are they literally like 400 times the cost of like a regular, the woman in the red dress? Then, yeah, but if you think okay, about yeah. it, like how much the population had to have grown from switching to farming between in the 200 years that this takes place, right? Like, yeah. I mean, it's like end endless. Basically, the whole earth would be covered in these farms. They'd have the power for more agents, but they don't. They have like, what, maybe five total? I mean, three that I remember, like their yeah. faces, but like... Mm -hmm. Why, yeah. why wouldn't you just have more? If this guy was really a problem, you really need to need it to, you know, it's the, it's the anti malware and it's out to search for the malware. Then why do you only, why do you have so few? Mm -hmm. I right. also love the fact that you compare humanity to malware because it feels <laughs> strangely on point. The, the woke humanity. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you know, they're out here breaking the rules in reality. It would be seen as a worm or a virus or whatever, right? Cause it's a computer program. So if the whole thing is a computer program, then the people that are awake and, and breaking the rules and bending the rules of the computer would be seen as a Trojan or, mm -hmm. uh, you know, some other form of, of malware or, or something. Right. And 
these agents theoretically should then be the agents that you have to do anti malware antiviral protection. Yeah, Why are there so few? The platform. Yeah. Yeah. It's they're like, just doing their they, job. <laughs> you know what? They didn't pay their licensing costs and they're only yeah. running on the trial agent <laughs> version. <laughs> yeah. Also, wouldn't it be more effective and efficient for the agents to not be human, to be like a flying insect, for instance, that could get around easier and quickly? Literally, and like go into people's malaria. brains. Yeah, like I, you know, really ineffective. This agent, even though it's been through many iterations and it's clearly more successful now, and it is very cool visually, mm-hmm. and it ingrained in me a love for Hugo Weaving. That was my yes. first, uh, I think, big role for Hugo Weaving, where I was like, this guy knows what's up. Yeah. And his delivery is just like as Mr. much Keanu's, Anderson. Yes, thank you. It's like you know, Keanu is great. Lawrence Fishburne is great. Yes. Carrie Ann Moss is good. You know, Joey Pants. Uh, everyone is brilliant. Yeah, but Hugo Weaving took the simplest lines and delivered yeah. them in such a like when he talks about if, if so it's anything, menacing. It's it's the smell. Can you the smell, smell it? it? I'm yeah. like. Like I, I'm sitting here, I'm in a theater, yeah. completely safe, and I'm like, I am legit scared of this dude, and yeah. I'm nowhere near this. I feel saturated by it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want to talk about the deja vu scene. Real yes. Quick. It was. It's. It's always been a, a little hiccup in this movie for me because it. It just feels so clunky. This movie does a. You know, I know we're tearing it apart, but we're having fun talking yes. about it. But oh, yeah. we all we love still it. love it. We still yeah, love it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I may watch it right after we hang up. But the deja vu scene always bothered me because the the movie is well crafted. But this was one of the few times where I was like, "Ooh, that felt real clunky." Because that's not how deja vu works at all. No, it's never just one. It's never that quick. You never see the same thing twice. That's not deja vu. It's always the feeling. Yeah. Of you've been in this situation before or you've said these things before. And I really wish they would have taken the time and just like reconstructed a scene. Like if you if you saw Morpheus and Neo walking up to the door of the Oracle and the camera shots are a certain way, somebody shares a dialogue a certain way. And then later in that movie, whenever Deja Vu is supposed to happen, shoot another door shoot the same shot composition and have Trinity or anybody else kind of deliver the same line again. And then Keanu's like, Whoa, I just had deja vu. And then, you know, all hell's about to break loose. But it was so weird to be like, Oh, I see a black cat. Oh, I see a black cat. Like what? No, that's not deja vu. Immediately. Yeah. (laughs) You just saw a cat twice. That's not. Yeah. yeah. For a way to continue the storytelling. I feel like that was an okay choice to explain that there's something here and basically the program got to line 50 and said "Uh uh-oh problem go to 10 and had to replay a section of it Uh, right i think that's fine uh but if i if if i was one of the people in that area if i was neo walking through and saw that cat i would just i would probably say something similar because honestly, that's the word I would use to describe something I saw a second time, right. but it's not, I think it is a, they use the words to best define this thing they saw, but it is not the word. The words are not the actual thing they saw. Yeah. Cause no, that it, makes yeah. perfect sense. That actually clears it up a lot towards me. Yeah. yeah. For me. Yeah. Thinking yeah. about it programmatically as uh, we keep bringing it back to computers. Cause that's, I mean, that's well, the that's intention, the but yeah. yeah. I think that uh, I think that it does make sense. When I watched it when I was a kid, it didn't make sense. It just felt out of place. Like, oh, what? Mm-hmm. Like just a cat, it's just a cat. It could could doesn't even have to be deja vu. Cats are stupid and weird. They do what they want. You know, mm-hmm. he no. could have just gone in a circle and been like, "Hey, what's up?" Yep. Like yeah, I wouldn't if they have really even wanted to, if they really wanted to as, nail it. It yeah. should have been a cat licking itself and then staring right at you, and then but, you take two steps yeah. and it does the exact <laughs> same thing again and be like, but it wouldn't feel the same. You'd be like, well, that's just a cat being a cat. It could yeah. have been anything. It could have been a replication of like a, a door that was open and you saw the painting and the room was exactly the same layout. He walks next to, to like walked past a it down the hallway. A second room, identical. That yeah. would have made mm-hmm. more sense and also Especially still makes sense problematically. Especially in those shackle tenements yeah. they were in because yes. 
those are all supposed to be in some level of disarray. But if you had one that had literally a family portrait on the wall, and then you walk by a second one that had the exact same family portrait, but the number outside was different. You're like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, they they fixed this blunder, I guess, like when they did the bricked up, right? It was bricked up like I'm on one, right? Not, not yeah, far right, after yeah. that, right? Where they brick up the window and then the door, right? is all bricked up. And so they've closed it off to them. That still makes sense programmatically. Mm-hmm. And it makes more sense in the context of like, it didn't feel out of place. It's like, oh, they're manipulating the program of the matrix. Yes. Yeah. Versus the cat. I think, I think maybe it's just that it's because it was a cat. It was a cat. Yeah. Yeah. We just have a problem with the cat. Yeah. 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 Long story short, we're dog people, I think is really what this <laughs> comes down to. Cats do it. I'm just saying cats do what they want. Like I would not have marked it as out of the ordinary. So uh, the agents in this movie, they are trying to get to this team, to anybody, because they uh, say that they want the codes to Zion's mainframe. Mm-hmm. And Morpheus has it in his head. It's why Cypher betrays the team to set up for Morpheus's capture so that the machines can get the passcodes to Zion's mainframe. He really um, just wants good steak again. Yes. I oh, mean, steak looks so good. I was cutting into it. Literally, every time I watch that movie, I'm like, I want a steak. Me too. <laughs> yeah. I want a steak and a, just a nice big bottle, uh, bottle of red wine. Um, so if they need these codes for Zion, um, so I'm going to have to lean on y'all for this, but why wouldn't Zion change these codes daily? You know, I mean, and, and then like, but yeah, you've you got a key that is, it's probably uh, similar to crystal. Help me out on this RSA. The mm-hmm. way that it does key yeah, exchange. The tokens. Yeah. It's you have a, you have a portion of a key like the Picard going to blow up. I, you need my voice print, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, And then there is something else that the ship has. And the two of those keys, basically one says it's coming from the ship and the other one says it's from this person. And those get scrambled every so often. It's not dissimilar to the way Enigma worked. That's the way I'm guessing. If he literally has, you know, something yeah. and it's like Nebuchadnezzar <laughs> or one, I'm like, no, that's, you know, yeah. n- that's not. Also, given that we know how bad these computers computers got why are you running a mainframe in the last bastion of humanity why are you not running it on steam power with coal and then the gates are human they like yeah there needs to be an actual radio communication where someone has a sign counter sign counter counter sign before i open the gates why are the right. gates computer controlled that seems that seems why a security is it connected problem to, to the why is it connected to the network and also my my question my bigger question is have they just lost the technology? There's only a few of them that even know how to use the computers needed to get into the matrix. It's not a, it's not a large percentage of them, even when they do get designed in the in the next films, right? Like it's not a large percentage of people that yeah. know how to work these things. So have they just right. lost the technology? So maybe they aren't even regularly changing the passwords. But if they're not, then the computers would have broken them already. It's been 200 years. Force. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I mean, also, I mean, I feel like the robots down. could brute force get in there anyways. Like, I know. Yeah. I mean, they pretty Just much do. Follow by the one, of, follow one yeah. of the strips back. Yeah, like, yeah, literally which... attach yourself to the sh- to the ship. Be quiet. I mean, it's it's uh, Millennium Falcon on an asteroid. I just have to mention it because it, it. I had the thought and it made me crack up. I wrote a note that there are so many shots with telephones in the foreground. <laughs> rotary that, phones. Yeah, rotary phones <laughs> in the foreground. That half the time I was expecting the top secret giant phone gag of somebody walking up to the phone <laughs> in the foreground, but it's still huge. Mm-hmm. Like, hello. And if we're going to date this movie, pay phones, landlines, cell phones are the only way you can talk securely. Let's just laugh mm-hmm. at secure cell phones yeah. in those days. Securely yeah. talk back to your pirate radio ship. Yeah. And but the only way you can get uploaded is through a landline. Where's the other end of that landline plugged in? <laughs> and it wasn't every landline either. It was always just a, a specific. Random, well, they t- they yeah, targeted yeah, specific them. Yeah. There were, there was certain ones in an area. Cause they would be like, that one's compromised. Give me another one. Yeah. yeah. The mm-hmm. phone thing never made sense to me. 
The only thing that makes sense about it is that it was 1999. And so like mode dial up modem is like where the thought was, right? Like you get dialed up into the internet, you get dialed up into the mainframe. So like into the, uh, into the matrix. So in order to get out, you have to go through the dial up process. It's all like my brain can think of, but even still, like when I, even when I watched it as a kid, the mo- the phone thing never made sense. Like, why do some phones work and some don't? Why do cell phones not work then? Do I need a phone? Why- if I can upload, if you can basically upload anything to my, you know, in Matrix persona, why are they just on earwigs like the agents? So right. I can talk all the time. Why? <clears throat> because Nokia paid a lot of money for sponsorship placement yeah. yeah yeah and let's be serious andy you me and probably every other person i know who saw that movie was like when can i get one of those phones and exactly. then follow up to that was how much do they cost yeah exactly uh, i'll wait a year all right before we wrap up this conversation i just have to know uh in the matrix there are so many s- cool badass names we have neo trinity morpheus cypher tank dozer switch APOC, all these cool names. Uh, what I'm going to put you on the spot. What are you choosing for your matrix name? I'll go first to give you some time. I was thinking about it. I, I thought about it for like 30 seconds. That's it. And uh, best I could come up with, I was like, I'm going to go by Kodak. That's me. I'm Kodak. Hey, what's up? Don't worry about it. I need a landline now. I'm Kodak. You know, <laughs> sounds pretty cool. <laughs> oh, I like that. Yeah, you, you stole mine. I was going to go with code, but codex a mm. little too close. So I'd probably go with index. Mm. See, and I'd probably go with something not computer related like Barbie. Nice. I mean, when it cool. who would it? Yeah. Who would ask? All right. Well, uh, that's going to do it for another episode of Movies and Mainframes. Uh, thank you, Kevin and Crystal, for joining me and talking about The Matrix. Um, and, thank you for having us because uh, we could still talk about this for a lot longer. So, you know, join in the comments. <laughs> absolutely. Yes. And thank you for listening. And remember, I want to hear from you. Like Crystal said, head over to thwack.com, look for movies and mainframes, and leave us a comment. And you can always reach us at movies and mainframes at solarwinds.com. All right, everybody, that's going to do it for us. We are going to log off. And until the next time, we will see you later. Bye. Movies and mainframe.